and like saying no to cravings. It's not even to the substance itself. It's to cravings. It's like I will no longer be a slave in my life. I've been a slave for most of my life to some substance, to some love, to some attachment. And it's like, no, I am free and I value total freedom inside of myself. I will not subject myself to a substance again or to a craving. And um, that took that questing night mentality to bring forth more purity. But through that, I felt myself become a little bit more whole once again. And I think every single time we can run an experiment or do self-inquiry or do a meditation or get stiller and get deeper and get stronger into who we are, we become a little bit more whole and our ego becomes a little bit more comfy for our soul. And through this path of letting go of what is not you, of what is not true, and also saying yes, heroically to what is you, right? With that radical affirmation, that radical affirmation is going to face massive resistance. And there's this radical and heroic yes that must pour out to bring forth my essence. And then there must be this discernment of what to say no to and what to let go of. And the more we can do this, I think the more whole we become in our essence. And the more whole we become in our essence, the more we know our essence. And if there's anything immortal in this life, in this lifetime from start to finish, it is the wholeness that you create inside of yourself. People are going to come and go. It's one of the saddest parts about life. And you're going to watch people go. Things you love are going to come and go. And there's some beauty in that, actually. There's some beauty in the dance of life and death and love and grief. A lot of beauty there. And all of it's helping you become more full, more whole in your experience, more whole in who you are. And the crazy thing is, my friends, is when I get deep, deep enough into meditation and I touch that more immortal part of my soul, the immortal part of your spirit, there's a contentment with the coming and going of all things. Because if you really think about it, if there truly is an immortal peace inside of you, an aspect of divinity, that has been before, that is now, and that will be forever. These lifetimes, these loves, these experiences, these hardships and joys and triumphs are just like notes in a song to it. And through initiations, through meditations, through just growing up, like I touch that more immortal piece of myself often. And it's amazing that even in heartbreak, even in loss, there's still a sublime smile on his face. And I think this is what I would say is, is my spiritual path. And I've been looking for my spiritual path for a long time. The spiritual path is twofold, just like our being is twofold. We have this earthly self that we know. Everything that you know about yourself is the earthly self. And then we have the immortal self. And the immortal self is outside space and time. And he is dreaming into this reality. I am dreaming into myself right now. And that immortal self is the one who is just smiling at each note on the keyboard of each lifetime on the keyboard. And according to the Hermetic tradition, this ancient Greek, Roman, Egyptian tradition, is the spiritual path is about awakening to your immortal nature and incarnating your immortal nature here. That's pretty lofty. It's pretty abstract. But I think even that loftiness is also reflected in just knowing the essence of your earthly nature and bringing that forth and letting your song be full and glorious in its descents and glorious in its triumphs. I think the, the alignment and the wholeness, the knowledge of our essence and bringing it forth is the thing that lasts. But hey, 